welcome everybody to HBCU panel. I'm so grateful that you could join us. So I'm going to start, I think I should start the person in highest rank here. I'm going to start by introducing Jeanette Iris Stubbs. So Jeanette Iris Stubbs is the, okay, so she started her photography journey at the age of 11. I'm going to talk mostly about her photography because she's very passionate about that. So she started this at 11 and this was inspired by a camera that was gifted to her by her brother. And as a young African-American woman living in the US, Central America, Europe, South America, the Middle East, South Asia, and now in Africa, Jeanette has been, has had incredible opportunities to witness beauty and difficulties in the world, whatever the world has to offer through her camera lens. So over the years, her work has, her work began shaping into portraiture, studies of the times and places surrounding her. Jeanette's work tends to focus on the intertwining culture and social aspects of work, religion, art, music, dance, in places with social crisis caused by relationships, poverty, war, and health. And despite the often serious nature of her focus, Jeanette is able to bring out such a richness in her images that dignifies the subjects as well as communicates her perspective on the state of other people's lives. Jeanette is, also uses her educational background in anthropology, politics, economics, social change, and the arts as a foundation for her photography. And she finds ways to culturally adapt the situation around her through language and participation, which creates a special niche from which she can photograph as part of the community. And lastly, Jeanette does, her, her work is both artistic and commercial, and she does documentary exhibitions, editorial work for magazines, event photography, and studio portraits. And her formal training in photography comes from a master's in fine arts from the International Center of Photography in New York. So she's been exhibiting from since, you know, 2000, and she exhibits, you know, in museums, online, and she's basically really, really passionate about photography. And she's also the ambassador's wife, ambassador of women's wife. So we are very, very happy to have on this panel. And next in line, I think ladies first. So I'll go ahead and introduce Diane. So Diane Ngabire is a recent graduate of Spelman College. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this, but Miss Jeanette also went to Spelman. So, Hello. yes. <laughs> So Diane is a graduate of Spelman. Congratulations, class of 2021. And this is in Atlanta, Georgia. And she majored in chemistry and will be heading to graduate school to pursue a PhD in pharmacology and toxicology at Virginia Commonwealth University. In her free time, she likes to watch TV shows or spend time with family or friends. Next, let's talk about Brandon. Brandon Kamagambe is also a graduate of an HBCU, Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. And he graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, class of 2018. And he is currently pursuing an MBA at the University of Suffolk. He, he's currently working at RICA, the Rwanda Institute for Conservation Agriculture, as the Admissions and Recruitment Operations Officer and co-founder of Papas Rwanda. While at Morehouse, he served as presidential ambassador engaging with prospective students, assisting them to understand what attending an HBCU meant and how much of a difference that experience, that experience was. He also served as the president of the International Students Association and later as the president of the African Students Association for the Atlanta University Center. So Spelman, Clark, Uni Clark Atlanta University and Morehouse College. And these leadership roles helped him bridge the gap between being born and raised in Africa as an African and as an African American. He also hosted a seminar with various scholars and politicians on the Africa we want, organized a TEDx talk themed balancing the equation and annually worked with the Rwandan embassy in the US to, to host student-led commemorations of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Thank you. You're welcome, Brandon. Next, I'm going to talk about Olivier. Olivier Munyeshaka is also a graduate, a recent graduate of University of Iowa, 
where he recently obtained a master's of accountancy and business analytics. But prior to Iowa, he also went to Morehouse College, Atlanta, Georgia, where he did a, a degree in business administration. Until recently, he worked for an early stage private equity firm in Los Angeles, California as an analyst and Olivier came back home to Rwanda and is now working with BRD in resource mobilization. So that is who we have on our panel. We're so excited to have a mix of Rwandans <clears throat> and African-American, which is just perfect. So I'll go ahead and ask, and I'll, I'll start with Jeanette and ask you to, especially since I don't know how much time you really have. So I'm gonna start with you and ask you to, first of all, tell us what is an HBCU? Because some people here may not necessarily understand what is an HBCU. And then once you've told us that, tell us why did you choose to go to one? And what was your experience like attending an HBCU? So thank you so much for that um, lovely introduction and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And it's, it's, a, it's wonderful to be on a panel with my Spelman sister and a couple of my Morehouse brothers. So um, we, we all share a very special connection with the AUC, which is what the Atlanta University um, Center is called. Uh, and um, the, to answer your question, so what is an HBCU? So H stands for historically, uh, B for black, um, college is the seat and U is university. So historically black colleges and universities. And why are they historically black? Uh, so um, due to the history in the United States of um, segregation, uh, education was not um, uh, afforded to uh, African-Americans who were called blacks or Negroes um, at, around the turn of the century. And so um, due to that, they created or, or institutions were created on, on their behalf. Um, and those universities and colleges uh, from about the turn of the century, the last one, not this current one, the last one uh, from 1800s into the 1900s, the, those uh, colleges and universities were primarily for um, students of African-American um, descent. So people who were of, um, uh, who were of descent from uh, slaves uh, in Africa or um, in, in the Americas, but they um, sort of evolved into places where people of color in general um, could find a safe space to uh, learn, um, to be educated and to thrive. And um, once segregation uh, ended in the, in the 60s, 1960s, um, the, the moniker historically black colleges and universities became um, something that was for those universities that were uh, established before uh, integration. So um, that's what, that's sort of a long uh, <laughs> explanation, um, but that's basically what it stands for. And um, why did I choose to? So I'm actually of, um, so both of my parents went to uh, HBCUs. They went to what is now called um, Arkansas uh, State in Pine Bluff um, and, uh, or at, maybe it's, Arkansas University of Pine Bluff, anyway. Um, but before that time, um, it was called uh, Arkansas, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff at uh, Pine Bluff or Arkansas A&M. And uh, so they were both proponents of um, HBCUs. My older sister went to one, um, but they gave us a choice. They said, you can either go to a state school and we're from Maryland, or uh, you could go to an HBCU. And so I was the kid who was like, no, but I want to go to some other school that has like sports and, you know, like all of this. They're like, well, Maryland has sports. I was like, no, but I don't want you coming over to my dorm. No, thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. That's too close. And they said, well, there's, you know, you can go to Howard. It's in DC. I was like, still too close. And they said, well, you, you know, you can decide. So I actually applied to a few different schools. Um, I actually got a scholarship for uh, a university in the north of the United States. And uh, my parents said, well, you can go there if you want to pay for it. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. So what are you paying for? And so they said, we're paying for an HBCU. So um, I chose Spelman because my sister went there. Um, and at the time, I wasn't really excited about it. And then I can't tell you how uh, Spelman has transformed my life. And it transformed my life from the moment I arrived there and realized that um, when I thought I was a big fish, 
um, you know, as an incredible student in, in a pretty large high school in, in Maryland, um, you know, black woman at the top of all her science classes, at the top of all her math classes, at the top of all her English classes. I was like, oh yeah, I'm all that. I got to smell and I was like, hey, so you're, you're all that too. And oh, so are you, and so are you and what? So it turned out um, that I was surrounded by incredibly brilliant women um, from all over the United States and the world. And it completely changed my, um, well, first of all, it kicked my ego down a little bit, which was good for an 18 year old. And, um, but it also gave me an opportunity to have um, classmates and colleagues and, um, and actually just across the street is Morehouse College. Um, where we could also take classes and Clark University, Morris Brown is there and the medical school, um, Morehouse Medical School is also there. So we had an opportunity to take classes at all of those um, institutions and they were filled with brilliant people and brilliant professors. And not one single time was there any, uh, you know, race or uh, microaggressions or any of the things that I had been, had been an absolute part of my everyday existence as a student uh, in, in Maryland, none of that was happening and I could just learn and I felt safe and I felt surrounded by people who, who had similar experiences to me and it was incredible. And just to add to that, what did it do for me? So today, every week during this, this COVID pandemic, I get on a Zoom call with my classmates both from Morehouse and Spelman every week. Incredible, incredible network. The people in my class are like at the top of their game in Fortune 500 companies, doctors, lawyers, uh, educators, nonprofit. They do everything, everything. And, that they're, and they're at the top of their game. So if I'm like, um, I need X, Y, Z, there's like, oh, I can call so-and-so. I need so-and-so. I'm traveling across the country. I'd be like, huh, I'm in Memphis. Let me see who's in Memphis like a hundred people. <laughs> and so it's an incredible network. And I know that there, there's always gonna be that support available to me in my career and as, a, as in my personal life. So I hope that answered your question. It's kind of long-winded, but sorry about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. I love the detail and your story. It's absolutely amazing. Good choice that you chose the route not to pay for your own college. That was a smart choice. <laughs> So to Diane, I'll, I'll go straight to Diane. And this, this is going to be the same question to Brandon and Olivier. How did you guys hear about HBCUs? How did you hear about an HBCU? And why did you end up deciding to go to an HBCU? What was that like? All right. Um, hi, everybody. Yeah, uh, Thank you for a great introduction to, um, so to answer your question, really, when I so I went to Gashore Girls Academy for my A-level, and that's when I was really introduced to, um, you know, studying in the U.S. And from there, I was kind of prepared, and I understood, like, um, what schools to apply to, what do I look for, and stuff like that. But really, I did not apply through Gashora. So when I graduated uh, in 2015, I took a gap year and I applied to Shiken, which is uh, also an organization that helps, um, you know, women from post-conflict countries to apply to uh, colleges and universities in the U.S. So from Shiken, that's when really I didn't know what an HBCU was. I had no idea what that is. And, you know, what Shiken do is they you know, according to your TOEFL and your SAT score, they match you with a school that they think you can get into. So for me, really, I wanted to attend a schools on the East Coast because that's where I knew a lot of people from my high school and, you know, a lot of chicken scholars do go to schools in the, on the East Coast. But um, I don't know, someone from Atlanta just told chicken, oh, there's this great school that we think she can fit in. So that's how Spelman came in. And uh, I remember looking for uh, what Spelman College and I saw it was, you know, HBCU, I had to Google what that means. And um, it was also all women. And personally, I went to all girls schools back in Rwanda. So I was like, okay. 
that's that's great because you know I can still be in all you know women's schools. That, for me, that was okay. So really, I didn't know how what an SBC was. I knew what it was when I heard about Spelman, and um, that's how I chose it. I applied early decision at, at Spelman College, and I got into that with a full scholarship. So really, I didn't have to apply for any other school. So I just when you know as a random student if you get into a school with a full scholarship really you don't even have uh like oh i'm not going there I'm like no right so i just went there like that and I really um i remember telling my family and my friends oh, i'm going to an hbcu it's all black and um even my family were like how are you going to survive like in an all black community like what is that you know i i, I bet being in rwanda would understand what that means like um so, you know, my experience there was amazing, but when I stepped my foot at Spelman, I was so scared. I was like, how are these people going to see me given that I'm an international student? I have no idea what their backgrounds are. But really, as um, Ms. Janet said, it's a very, it was, it was a very supportive uh, environment for me until now. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully that answers everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. Who wants to go next, Brandon? Yes, we'll sorry, I think, sure, I, sorry, I, I think my network cut out. I didn't get the question. So the question was, how did you think about an HBCU and why did you, why did you decide to go there? Oh, it's, uh, mine is quite of an interesting story. I, well, um, so uh, I'm a British Rwanda scholar. So with British Rwanda, I was, that, um, you know, we would go through the program, uh, uh, giving you an opportunity to like learn about servant leadership, uh, do your SAT, uh, SAT preparations, and also help you to really get to understand what your passion is. Um, so. Uh, I, I got to learn about uh, uh, Morehouse College when one of uh, the re recruiters came to visit Bridge Chiranda, uh, and then they shared about Morehouse College. Honestly speaking, I was not like, you know, like I wasn't that much excited about it <laughs> in the first place. Um, but uh, as in, I got to, you know, I used to read a lot about Manuta King. Connection. Hello, Brandon. Can you hear us? Olivier, are you there? Maybe we can hop on to Olivier and then we can come back to Brandon. Yeah. Can you hear me? Please be louder. I think your volume is is really low. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? That's good. Awesome. Yeah. So my experience is similar to Brandon. Uh, you know, we're in the same program, uh, British Rwanda. And so um, at some point, you know, we're applying to school. <coughs> Obviously, like as many Rwandan students, we don't know anything about HBCUs. And at least back then, we didn't know. I didn't know anybody who went to an HBCU. And, but we knew all about Harvard, all about Princeton and Yale. And so everybody in our class wanted to be, you know, to go to those schools. So. Uh, one time this, uh, you know, it all happened during our time that uh, Warren Buffett uh, had given money to Morehouse uh, to go get some uh, uh, students from the Great Lakes, uh, you know, meaning Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, the Congo. And so, like, you know, two gentlemen from Morehouse, well, actually, like, uh, a gentleman and a lady from Morehouse uh, came to, all, all the way to Kigali to recruit uh, Rwandan students for, for that scholarship, that one Buffett scholarship. And so they came to tell us about Morehouse, you know, this great school, uh, with, which is basically like, you know, trying to develop, you know, uh, future leaders for, uh, for the um, black communities all over the world. And, you know, like basically kind of filling this gap as, you know, uh, uh, Janet has, has, you know, eloquently described that, you know, that was between, you know, the, the uh, education, uh, white education and, and black education. It was amazing, amazing presentation, amazing background, amazing story, but still I wasn't interested. 
I was like, one, I'm not going to a normal school. Two, like an all black school. Nah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I wanted to touch on by telling that story is the uh, the, the conception, the misconception we had about you know African Americans uh, and you know blackness in general. And so like being in Rwanda, I was like, we knew uh, the only experience we had with, with the African Americans were like you know like. Uh, uh, music videos, you know, they, uh, what they what the media told us, and I was like, I'm going to school, I'm going to college to run, I want to run, I'm not gonna be part of a gang or like, you know, I'm not gonna be, I don't know, like, I'm not trying to be a rapper or something like that, because that's what that's what I thought, you know, um, being an African American was, and you know, I'm I'm saying all this, you know, for my brothers and sisters who probably have maybe the same view uh, that it was. Nothing, nothing like that. Eventually, you know, I decided to, uh, to, to. I was fortunate to actually now looking back, it's a blessing, you know, that I was chosen to be part of that one Buffett scholarship, and you know, to my house. And when I arrived, it was, you know, it was, you know, you know what they say, you know, if uh, the the lion catches a gazelle, the lion gets to tell the story. So the story that I've heard was from a lion, and I got to actually, you know, uh, live. Uh, with African Americans, learn from them, you know, like learn the history, like all the things uh, they they went through as a people, and also like all the work they they uh, they put in for us or for me to be there, to able to have access to that scholarship and to be have that uh, education. So I'm, um, you know, I'm super grateful for the Mohouse education uh, for because you know being because I went to both, you know, to. Uh, HBCU and to a white school. So I went to the University of Iowa. And the black education, the HBCU education is nothing like any other education. And so like I can't, you know, I don't I can't believe I was doubting it in the beginning. And I can't think of, you know, um, I can't wish I would have done it otherwise because it was amazing. I was I'm I'm super grateful. So yeah, that's the, the origin story. Thank you so much. Brandon, welcome back. Sorry, we lost you there for a minute. I think you were in the middle of telling us about how through Bridge to Rwanda, you were, you were told about more house, but you're still not as excited. Maybe you want to carry on, just maybe rush through that. Yes, sure. Sorry, I'm traveling. My internet is unstable. Um, so uh, what I was saying was that I, I got to learn uh, about Mohouse College through Bridge Rwanda when one of the recruiters came to really want to talk to us about, you know, education in the U.S. as well as uh, education at the HBCU. Honestly, uh, I, uh, as, as, uh, as I was saying, I had barely had any interest of studying at a, at a historically black university. But given that uh, you know, I grew up reading more about, about like Martin Luther King, about civil rights, like maybe I should try this university out and go to and uh, get to. And also, I was very much excited to go to school in, uh, in Atlanta because I was growing up. I watched a lot of movies and about Atlanta and. Um, I was a little bit, you know, in, in, interested in getting to go to that big city. And but um, as as Olivia mentioned, um, the expectations just because most of us, mostly in Rwanda, I would say, we don't know about HPCs. Uh, everyone wants to go to schools like Harvard, uh, wants to go to schools like you know Northwestern, because that's where most of the most of people most of uh, people aspire to go to school too, but given like um, having gone to Mohouse College and got the experience there, I would definitely say that my kids have to go to HPCU because the experience is extraordinary. It's totally different from the experience anyone could get from any other university. Um, you get to, you know, the bonding, um, the, the, the teacher-student relation, the professor-student relation where you feel like, you know, this is my brother talking to me, my, you know, you, and you get, you know, going to my house is also, and Spellman is an extra um, addition given that you get to, you know, get an experience of going, taking classes at Spellman as well as Morehouse College. So the bond and the education, and even it's, uh, the, the, uh, it gives, it, it gave me the idea of like, you know, this is, this is, 
getting to love more of, of yourself being black than or even being random. So like um, it's to me it's it's more it's not it's not mostly about how I got to know Morehouse College, but more of like what I got from Morehouse College. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. So in maybe just one minute, Brandon, Olivier, and maybe Brandon, you can start since you just finished. Brandon, Olivier, and Diane, I want to know what your experience was specifically as a random student was being uh, uh, being in this HBCU. And second, what would you say were the benefits you experienced and what are the challenges, some of the challenges you experienced, if any, during your time there? Brandon, okay, you can so, go. Yes. Sure, thanks. Right. So we had a chance that, uh, I had a chance that I went to Morehouse when, uh, during the time when presidential scholars were still going to, there were a couple of presidential scholars at Morehouse and, um, and Spellman as well. So I would say that uh, being random at, at HPC was that, you know, you get to be asked these questions that most, uh, most African-Americans or international students read about in the news like, Rwandan their genocide against the Tutsi, you know, what is it like to have grown in a country that experienced a genocide, uh, you know, questions around genocide. And, uh, and you know, when you grow up in Rwanda, you don't get to be asked such questions. Um, you know, everyone gets the information, they know this, the information themselves, they've lived the experience, or even the parents live the experience. But, you know, being Rwandan at HPCU, given that, you know, everyone, uh, every student wants, in, in, in every class, even if it's mathematics, you get to one way or the other, study something about black people, uh, the, the, your, the background of uh, being black. So everyone has that uh, eager to know about Africa. So now being that you're specifically from that country, Rwanda, everyone wants to know like, hey, is your accent different from someone else's accent from another country? So. Um, so being uh, being from Rwanda at, at Mohaus gave me like an opportunity to explore and learn more about my own country so that I'm like, like representing it in the correct way because being the person that uh, the first hand information I was feeling that if I miss if I say something wrong, then someone will take it as the facts. So I had to really like dig in to know exactly what is Rwanda and how can I portray to the rest of uh, you know the, the students or the community around me. Um, the challenges uh, I think. Hello, Brandon. Okay, maybe Olivier, you can go next. We'll come back to hearing Brandon's challenges. Yeah, so um, similar to Brandon's, obviously I echo everything that Brandon was saying about being um, uh, being allowed that space to be an ambassador for your country and for, for the continent. Brandon is back. Hello, Brandon. Hello, could can you hear? Did you hear? I can hear you. Can you hear lost, me? We lost you once you got start when once you started talking about the challenges. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so the challenge, I think the challenge was about you know the language Balia, getting to okay. really get uh, the, uh, the the southern accent. <laughs> uh, it was a bit of a challenge, but as time went, I uh, got to really understand it. Um, on, on the academics level, I think I did not get any. I I, I was challenged as a scholar but I did not get challenged as, uh, as an international student because everyone wants, everyone wants to help you, everyone is there for you. So I did not get challenged academically uh, as, as challenges of getting to learn, but more of like um, really uh, diving into really describing things, uh, describing uh, really being a scholar. So um, the benefits, as I said, were is that um, I got to really uh, get to understand and study my own, get to understand myself, my identity being black, being African and being random, and try to see if uh, I get to know, like if I graduate from Mohawk College, how am I going to use this in the real life? True, thank you, thank you so much. Olivier?
Hello. Olivier, can we hear you? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Um, yeah, so saying, you know, I echo what Brandon was saying, uh, but in addition, so for me, the, the, the experience of Mohas was almost like, you know, twofold. There's uh, the one, you know, like the, the academic, you know, professional, and uh, as well as the, the, the social one. So one of the things like on the academic side, uh, you know, like we came from, we came from, from, um, from Rwanda, from, you know, like people from disadvantaged backgrounds. And then like more house builds you up to become sort of like to get a seat at the table. You know, like they dress you up, they, you know, a, a more house man is well read, is well dressed, is well traveled. So they teach you how to dress, they teach you how to speak, they teach you how to, basically we even had a class about, you know, uh, table eti etiquette. So, you know, how to use uh, one knife, Use for a salad and one knife to use for you know for your main course and glass to so all those things uh, because obviously you know like people from upper classes people from uh, like you know advantaged families they know those things but like other people don't so Mohouse gives you that kind of builds you up and kind of affords you uh, a seat at the table so that I really appreciate and uh, another dear memory of mine is the the. We had on Thursdays, we had a crown, what is it, crown, crown forum. And, you know, you get to, you, you all the Mohaus people, sometimes, you know, some Spelman, you know, women who want to attend, you just go sit. Somebody who is very eloquent comes to talk to you, inspires you, it kind of you know, reminds you what it is to be, to fight for something or to believe in something or to just, you know, um, have, just be a human being. And so like those things, like, like small things that kind of, like, you know, inspire you every day at Mohouse, you're very inspired, you very sort of like, you know, they reminded you that like, you know, you, you too can have a seat at that table. And so like that sort of like, that was my experience in the, in the, on the sort of like uh, the, as a person to grow. And academically also like people think, uh, like people who go to white schools, for example, my friends who went to, you know, the Harvards, the Yales, the Princetons, we um, at the HBCUs, we get more uh, opportunities, kind of you know, career-wise than them, which is very ironic, you know, given that everybody wants to be at, at those institutions. But like, this is how it happens, right? Like, if you're looking, if you say that like, you're a CEO of a company, you're looking to hire a black person, where do you go? Sperman, well, okay, Morehouse and Sperman, of course, in that order. And. Uh, <laughs> So at Mohaus, we afforded, you know, like very many opportunities. We had like wow, personally. Yeah, I agree with that statement. Huh? And then, <laughs> yeah. Wait, what did you say? She doesn't agree with that statement. <laughs> I, I say they go looking for Spellman and then Morehouse. <laughs> no, no. Morehouse is Morehouse. No, it's, it's not going to change. Anyway, so. We, as, even as international students, we got to work like, uh, you know, with big companies. My friends uh, did internships at Google, you know, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs. I worked at Bank of America myself. Uh, so like we, we had like these, all these opportunities that our friends didn't have. Uh, we went to white schools. And you, you know, a Mohaus man is also well-traveled. We had opportunities. Brandon and I spent a spring um, break at, in Haiti. All paid, all paid for by Morehouse. Um, we got to travel, we went to Australia, went to New Zealand. Uh, we went all over the place, all on, on Morehouse. And so like that experience kind of, you know, gives you, makes you a well-rounded way, way uh, uh, person and kind of, you know, uh, and what else? Challenges, yes, language, of course. In my first, my first semester, I couldn't hear nothing. Not in class, not in the cafeteria, not from my friends. I was just smiling and nodding and saying yes. That, that was it. That was it. So, but like, eventually you you know, as as anything, you adapt and you know, you learn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olivier. That's that's interesting. Diane, yes. All right. Um, being the last one, so really, so I went to Spelman. It's all women. Morehouse is all men. But really, when we said Spelman and Morehouse, we are like one minute away. So. Schools are together, you don't feel that, you know, all women, all men thing, no. 
Um, but anyway, so for me coming to Spelman, I came uh, when I was a freshman, I think Olivia and Brandon were going to their junior year. So again, as they mentioned, there were a lot of, you know, there, I think also Spelman had other random students, uh, presidential scholars. So for me, I had already that uh, uh, random community and also outside. But I'm also an outgoing person, so for me it was easy to make friends, like um, from my like my classes and outside classes uh, through joining clubs and all that. So really, um, for me, I wouldn't say English. I don't think that's really the problem, but uh, also like being in the south, people have different accents, so I struggled to understand some people. Uh, but also I was okay to understand others. It depends really where people came from. Also people in America just have different accents. You can't say that everybody talks the same. So that sometimes I struggled with that, but it wasn't a lot. Um, and um, so many for me, I think um, it just gave me like a supportive environment. Also, um, like strong alumni association, like as they mentioned, and also Brandon, Olivia, and Jeanette, like you have a strong alumni association. Like these are the people when you graduate, or even you graduate, you can communicate to if you want an internship, if you want any advice. So those are really things I don't, I mean, I'm not saying you can't get them from other school um, PWIs, but I'm just saying that um, HBCUs just have. Uh, strong alumni association. Everybody is looking for you, right? So that's like something I got from uh, going to Spelman. Also, the pride of just being a Spelman, a Spelman woman is, you know, it feels good because like every time you say you graduated from Spelman College or Morehouse or Howard or any other HBCU, there's a lot of HBCUs. It's just a pride. Um, so that's something I got from it. And also, um, the diversity, even though we are mentioning about like being black, but HBCUs really educate like all races, you know, like I've seen white people um, uh, filming a uh, Morehouse also, and also um, Hispanic people, uh, Latino people. So it's everybody you're going to see. Uh, and I love uh, that, uh, that diversity. And also for me going to Spelman, really being in Rwanda, we don't really learn about the history of black people. And at Spelman, they gave me classes that helped me understand, you know, slavery and what happened. I cannot say how much I was like, wow, we really don't learn anything. Because when you arrive here, you get to go in classes that teaches you a lot of things. And I don't think you're going to get those classes at Harvard or Yale or Princeton. And I'm saying this because I know all random students, everybody who even reached out, oh, I want to apply in colleges in America. They say, yeah, I want to go to Harvard, Stanford. And I'm like, okay, great, that's good. But there are also these other small, amazing colleges and universities you can apply to. Um, Class-wise for me, let me tell you, coming from Rwanda, I think in A-level we do have, I think we have, um, we take really hard classes. My freshman year, because I was uh, biochemistry and then I changed to chemistry. Um, but my freshman year, I was repeating things I learned in A-level because I did physics, chemistry, and biology. So really minus math, but I was repeating everything. So my freshman year was really easy. So we have a strong background when it comes to sciences, but there's also something that we miss. Um, you know, from going to school back home, which I think Spelman gave me. Um, challenges. Um, I mean, everybody just have challenges in general. I mean, college is not easy, but you know, you, you go through it, there's always, there are always going to be some challenges, of course, but I would say really that I had a lot, but it's because I had, you know, people backing me up, like professors, friends, a uh, random student at Morehouse and Spelman. Um, but also I would say, as uh, Olivia mentioned, like we really get opportunities to have internships and research. Like I've done a lot of internships and research while I was at Spelman. And it's something that I'm grateful for. Um, and yeah, which is very important too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
so much. So I'm going to open up the floor. We have about just 15 minutes for questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat and Hannah can read them out or feel free to turn on your audio and let us know what your question is. I know a couple of people are asking how to apply to some of these schools and thank you Jeanette for sharing some of those links. That is really helpful. So if you have any questions, now is a great time to ask your questions. <clears throat> Somebody's asking, is it possible to acquire a scholarship at Morehouse or Spelman? Um, I can go for a uh, Spelman and I think it would be good if Olivia and uh, Brendan talks about Morehouse. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Really, to be um, just to say the truth about Spelman, like HBCUs in general, and Jeanette can you know back me up on this. HBCUs in general, um, I don't want to say that they don't have money, but really, it's the alumni that support these schools. And so, I'm not going to compare Spelman, Endowment, and Harvard. It's not the same. So the scholarship to go to Spelman. I know Spelman offers scholarship itself, but really I can't say like uh, what's the criteria or anything because personally, I didn't really get a, a full scholarship from Spelman. Uh, so I wouldn't know, but I know people who have a full scholarship from Spelman. Also some students at Spelman come and they don't have full scholarship, but depending on your academics you can get um, money from the school but I also know that um, these days a lot of people are investing in HBCUs so there is high chances that scholarship can increase and you know they can take in more people hence um, uh, more scholarships and I think they're also I think Jeanette shared like HBCU a scholarship in the link, you can definitely apply for outside scholarships, which is something that can be done really uh, if you plan well, you know, your application process, you can apply for outside scholarships that can support your education in uh, HBCUs. Um, but I feel like I don't want you to think that a scholarship is a problem. Just apply, you never know, they can like your story, they can see your academics in high school and give you money. Don't let money be a barrier before you even apply. I think that's the best advice I can tell you. Thank you, Diane. Olivia, Brandon, or Jeanette, any comments? Well, I, I completely agree with what Diane said. Um, the HBCUs are um, historically for people of African-American descent um, who are historically the most impoverished group in America. And so um, the, <laughs> the wealth actually that the African-Americans in the United States built um, actually went to most of the predominantly white institutions. So the reason that how Harvard has such an incredible endowment is because a lot of the people who went there originally were slave owners and slave owner children. And so they sent their money back to Harvard. Um, and you know, that money that that wealth that they had came from the backs of African Americans. So unfortunately, they haven't gotten around to giving us back um, our wealth, but we'll get there or we'll get our own and that's fine. <laughs> but um, I think, uh, as Diane said, I think uh, your academics are really important. Um, and uh, actually knowing alumni or reaching out to alumni is actually very important. Um, my sister, um, who was a year behind me, also went to Spelman, and she and I just started a scholarship um, for students at Spelman. So um, it's, it's a habit. Spelman students, um, Spelman alumna, we, you know, once we get to a certain point in our lives, we give back to our, our school. And so we create scholarships for students. So um, sometimes you may get a partial scholarship and then you can reach out to the alumni associations and say, you know, I need help to get the rest of it. And you might find that that's a great way to, to get um, the rest of the, the monies that you need. So. Thanks, Jeanette. I think I think Diane, Olivia, and Brandon. It's this is a good 
idea for you guys to maybe put together an HBC alumni for Rwanda, the Rwanda chapter, <laughs> so that if students want to know how do I reach out to alumni, you know, you have a whole handful. So yeah, it's there you have it. <laughs> Some helpful links are being shared there. I see somebody else talked about an acting major. Do they have strong performing arts programs? So again, anybody want to say something to that? Just so you know, HBC is just like any other college. They have just about the same majors, you know, whether it's from the arts to science, it's most of them have all of it. So yeah, you can just do some research on that, but I believe they do, yeah. Just to answer that specifically for Spellman, um, so um, two of uh, the two great actors who um, have went to Spellman and Morehouse, and they are um, Samuel Jackson and Latanya um, Jackson, and they just gave uh, five million dollars to um, upgrade the Performing Arts um, Center at Spellman and to create scholarships for performing artists. So, um, yes, they have a fantastic program there. So, and a lot, awesome. of, and actually, um, a lot of them do. Uh, Howard has a fantastic um, uh, film uh, school. They have, um, and so Kamala Harris, who is the vice president of the United States, went to Howard University. Um, so there's a diversity throughout the HBCU um, uh, network. Um, in terms of uh, the strengths of their um, programs. Um, Spelman happens to be, uh, and Morehouse, I think send the majority, along with Xavier University, send the majority of um, students from their colleges and university to medical school, for example, um, to graduate school. Uh, the majority of people of African descent that go to the uh, to secondary schools is what we call uh, master's degrees, MBAs, and medical schools do come from HBCUs. Awesome, awesome. Do we have any other questions before we start winding up in here? Any last words or recommendations or comments from the speakers? Right now would be a good time to ask your last questions. Oh, look who we have in the house. Yes. yes. <laughs> we have yes. <again. laughs> I was listening to Jeanette talk about Spellman and, and I was nodding my head. Uh, I went to the Spellman of some people call it call, uh, Harvard College. And Harvard is reputed to have a very good alumni network. And I'm proud of my small nucleus at Harvard, uh, my college roommates. But when I see the entire college of Spelman, the entire class of Spelman College getting together, connecting every week, even though they graduated some a long time, ago. time ago, not so long ago, <laughs> I won't give away ages or classes, but um, to see how powerful and how reinforcing that network of the alumna of, um, of Spelman College, and I suspect it's similar at other HCBUs, HBCUs, HBCU, sorry, dyslexic. Um, but that, so that I just wanted to say that for any of you thinking about the value of, a, of an undergraduate liberal education, um, really, I can't say enough about Spelman, even though I didn't go there. So uh, back over to you. Thank you for joining today. So, but if you didn't know that, this is Peter um, Roman, uh, the ambassador to Rwanda from the United States, in case you don't know. I'm Johnette's husband. Yes, he's my husband. <laughs> The surprise visit. <laughs> Do we have any other questions in the house? Yes, very good. So Dan said something very profound. Sometimes just reach out to these to these schools, to the admission offices, and ask about what programs they're offering. If you can't find them on the website, most of the times you can actually see it on the website, what programs they offer. But if you, if you don't see the program of your choice, feel free to contact any of the admissions officers and ask them, do you offer this program? What financial aid opportunities do you offer to international students? Feel free to ask those questions. They'll be ha more than happy to indulge you. Yeah, also I would talk about um, Morehouse. So people who, um, how do you, truck, is that running? How do you, Olivia? 
I know more tracking. have like tracking, yeah, and they give like scholarship for the student. So if you can run, I guess that would be a scholarship for you. <laughs> right. If you're athletic, guys, yes, there are <laughs> athletic scholarships too. So yeah. So yeah, just um use your talent. You never know. Some yeah. schools are looking for talent and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, any last Please go ahead. You were saying? Yeah, I was saying like the uh, Mohaus has a very kind of strong um, track record recruiting like track students from East Africa. So we know like the, especially Kenyans, like, you know, yeah. guys who can run. If you, you know, if you, you, you can do that, I think Mohaus will, will be more than happy to give you a full scholarship. But so like uh, to add to what the, Dan was saying, Dan was saying, Obviously, talk to the um, admission officers. You know, it's always the cold emails and cold LinkedIn messages that are um, underrated. So, and if you need anything else, if you need help, please feel free to reach out to me. Or, like, I'm sure Brendan is also happy to help. So, I'm happy to tell you all about Mohaus separately, or like, what about Spellman that I know. And, uh, like, I, I'm happy to help as well if you're applying. And so, yeah. You may want to leave your email address there if you want them to reach out to you. For any of you who say you want, it's okay for them to reach out to you. So any last words, any recommendations, any comments from the speakers to the audience? I'll go first because I actually have to run. But um, thank you so much for including me. And Diane, it's so nice to meet you, my Spelman sister, and Olivier yeah, and Brandon, my Morehouse you. brothers. It's a pleasure to be on this panel with you. and. Um, you know, feel free uh, when you guys get your Spelman Morehouse Alumni uh, Association organized to include me. Uh, I'd be happy to, to be a part of it. And um, I hope that if there are any questions um, that I can answer offline, um, just get in touch with Jeremy and he'll, uh, he'll forward them to me. So um, take care, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Faithful. And uh, again, have a great rest of your day. And Think about an HBCU. Thank you Bye. so much for gracing us with your presence. Have a lovely rest of your day. Next, Diane, do you wanna go next perhaps? Any um, last words or questions? Oh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, you know, I'm, I'm just glad this is something that is done because I really have seen a lot of running students don't want to apply to HBCUs because, you know, oh, it's all black or, you know, oh, there's a lot of, you know, misunderstanding behind HBCUs. Um, and I'm glad this is something that the uh, U.S. Embassy is doing. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm here for to answer any question, I dropped my email and, um, you know, there's some um, more house installment student already in Rwanda that you can reach out to, uh, which will be probably easy. But yeah, uh, thanks for doing this, yeah. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Olivier, Brandon. Yeah, so, um... Obviously, everything that we said here is, you know, it's not marketing or anything. We truly believe they uh, all have benefited a lot from the, the, the contribution that Mohaus has made. So, okay, I think we lost Olivia there. Brandon, are you there? I think Brandon, uh, internet. You already uh, dropped off. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, Olivier, you're back. Yes, I was saying that, you know, obviously we, we Mohaus has, Mohaus and Spelman, the HBCUs have tremendously improved our lives. And so we, I feel like everyone in the audience or anybody who is thinking about applying, would, you know, I will be, uh, they will benefit a lot from, you know, joining the, those institutions. And, you know, it, it's, the experience is slightly different from the kind of like the regular, say, U.S. college experience. And so, yeah, please, I will encourage everybody to, to, to apply. I know the 
uh, scholarships are somewhat limited, but you know, um, just try and uh, we also do on our part to try to find some things that we can share maybe with Faithful if we find anything. But yeah, and thanks for Faithful for like chasing me down and uh, making this happen. And you know, so <laughs> sorry I was a pain. No, I'm glad you could make it. That's what matters at the end of the day. Thank you so much, everybody who could make it for this for this session. I'm so glad Olivier and Diane could share their emails. So please feel free to reach out. But feel free to open that website. There are some very helpful links that have been shared. So please feel free to check those out. And this recording will be shared on Facebook and on YouTube later. So in case you want to share this with any of your friends or you had connection issues and you kept dropping off, but we're going to share this online later. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to close this out and end this meeting. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.